Hey everybody, welcome to Body Acting Wellness. Today we're talking Qigong for hip and knee mobility. Now as always, if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Now, many of us suffer with hip and knee pain, and a lot of it's because we just don't move enough. And the movement we do is through limited range of motion. So today I'm going to take you through a great program uh, that is accessible to everyone of every fitness level, of every age, uh, so that you can get some more mobility through the hip and the knee and decrease a great deal of pain. So this program is not only going to create mobility, but also stability. And it's both of those factors that make sure uh, your hips and knees are healthy, happy, and pain-free. So let's get to work. Step the feet. Together, let's start off with a few cleansing breaths. So bend the knees, tuck the pelvis under, cross the hands in front, take a deep breath in, visualize gathering white light. All around the body as you breathe in, as you breathe out, pull it down, filling your body, melting all tension down into the ground. Breathe two. Melt. Three. And melt. In four. And melt. And five. Good. We're going to come on down to the knees. So we're going to begin by rolling the knees. And we're going to keep the feet flat on the floor. Pinky, big toe, heel, even the floor. And we're going to gently roll the knees counterclockwise this time. Now, uh, I've fielded a few questions from people asking about joint rotations. And because the knee, in fact, is a hinge joint, uh, it's often thought that rotational movement could be irritating or damaging to the knee. Now, this is not exactly the case, though because the knee actually has some rotation, some internal and external rotation, uh, uh, rotational ability in the knee. So we want to make sure that it's able to counteract external stimulus of torsion and rotation, because through life we walk and we twist and we turn, and if we never do any conditioning, switch directions, uh, to help the, the body react to that, it very easily gets injured, and it's why as martial artists, we've used these movements for literally a couple thousand years to ensure that our knees stay healthy, happy, strong, and able to do all the crazy jumps and kicks and turns and twists that we do. So first we're just going to roll the knees both directions, nice and simple, in whatever range of motion you can do comfortably. Next, we're going to step the feet apart, about shoulder width a little bit wider, and now we're going to roll the knees inwards. Once again, explore whatever range of motion you can. And we just want to activate those six meridians that run through the legs, the spleen, liver, and kidney, bladder, the gallbladder, and stomach. Nice and easy. Get rid of that turbid synovial fluid that joint lubrication that tends to build up lots of broken bits. Beautiful. Now let's go the opposite way, rolling out. Nice and relaxed, breathing in through the nose, and out through the mouth. Beautiful. Now, we're going to alternate now. So, I'm going to step the feet a little bit wider. We're going to sink a little deep into our knees. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll the left knee out. And then roll the right knee out. Roll the left knee out. Roll the right knee out. And you're just going to let your weight shift. And you're just going to focus on the one knee rolling out. And the one knee rolling out. Really gently. Shifting the weight back and forth. Really great way to create stability and strength around the knee joint. 
making sure that any fossil adhesions, any scar tissue that tends to build up in the soft tissue, due to the fact that we just don't move that often, and when we do move, we move through small ranges. Really gently, just roll it out, roll it out, roll it out, roll it out. Okay, now we're going to reverse directions, roll it in, roll it in. In, roll it in. And this, these may take a few times to practice, to coordinate. A lot of movement we do too often. Rolling in, rolling in. And you can see it turns my body in the direction that it's moving to. Rolls in, rolls in. And go really gentle. Once again, it doesn't have to be a big range, it just has to be a new range. As long as it's new stimulus. Body has to adapt and change. A few more, nice and relaxed. Rolling it in. Beautiful. Okay, so let's move up to the hip now. We're going to very gently roll that hip around. Nice, big circle. And as always, want to explore as large a range of motion as you possibly can. And it should roll smoothly. It should be a nice, gentle circle. And you may notice that you may have some clicks and cracks and stops and pulls and tightness that doesn't allow this gentle circumductive movement. But the more you do it, easier to roll and the better it's going to feel. And once again, don't get too caught up on repetitions, 10 repetitions, 20 repetitions. You know, listen to your body. If it needs a little more, do a little bit more. Switch direction, roll the opposite way. You know, Qigong is all about connecting your mind to your breath and your breath to your movement. Using the physical exercise as a moving meditation it heals mind and body at the same time. But the kinesthetic effect, the understanding or having a greater connection to your body, um, allows you to realize when things aren't working right. So many of us are so disconnected to our bodies, and it's amazing how Qigong brings you back to your body, it allows you to connect. And realize when things aren't as they should. All right, hands behind the back. Let's roll the upper body now. So we're going to get some good stretch through the hamstrings, the IT band, and the hip flexor. And gently roll it around. Super relaxed. And once again, if you have back issues, or you have vertebral issues, or disc issues, just make a smaller range, smaller rotation. Totally fine. Can we always explore as big a range as possible? Really awesome way to increase the flexibility of your hamstring. Let's go the opposite way. Switch. Amazing way to start the day. I often think of Qigong as a cup of coffee without caffeine. Roll it around. Breathe nice and relaxed. Just a couple more. One last one. Beautiful. Okay, now we're going to get into a little bit of specific mobility for the hips. And these are really quite fun. So we're going to start with our feet together. We're going to turn our right foot out 45 and we're going to sink into our right leg. We're going to step the right foot, sorry, left foot forward uh, into what's called a cat stance. So we're going to have just the ball of the foot on the ground. And think of, very simple, I want to think like you're putting out a cigarette. So think of the cigarette on the ground. All we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting out that cigarette. So it's a really simple rotational movement. So our weight is loaded up on our back leg and we just got about 10% in the front leg. So we're just going to keep the hands in front here. Just touch the fingertips together, just so we have a point of reference. Now what we're going to do 
is we're gonna breathe in and we're gonna twist the hip in. And as we breathe out, we're gonna twist the hip all the way out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, twist. Breathing out, twist. So keep the hands in the center. And as you twist, just allow the body to rotate around that central access point. In and out. Breathing in, out, twist. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in. Couple more, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, and breathing out. Good, step back, go back. Let's switch sides. Now what you're probably noticing is that you're getting lots of stimulation in the standing leg. So we have yin and a yang leg. And so that yin leg, turn that foot out 45, sink, step that foot out. This gets all the stabilization stimulation, all the strengthening, while this leg is getting the mobility. So we get a little bit of Mobility and stability all at the same time. So hands in front once again. Sink into that left leg now. So 10% in the front, 90% in the back. Let's breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, sink your weight into your leg. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, twist. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Should be starting to feel that left leg. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Let's do two more. Breathe in, and out, breathe in, and out. Good, step it back. Good, shake out those legs a little bit. So now we're going to, once again, we're going to do some more internal external rotation, but we're going to now move from a horse stance. So a little bit more challenging. We're going to step the feet out a little wider. Feet are parallel to one another, and we're going to sink into our legs. Same thing. We're going to touch the fingertips together so we have a central reference point. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to shift our weight to the left. And as we shift our weight to your left, you're going to pivot on the ball of your right leg, twisting your leg in. And then you're going to pivot and twist your leg out. Then turning back to straight, we shift, we turn in, we turn out. Back down, we shift, we turn in, we turn out. Step down. So, breathing in and out. Step down, breathe in, breathe out. Step down, breathe in, shift. Breathe out, shift, breathe in, twist, breathe out, twist, breathe in, shift, breathe out, step down, shift, breathe in, twist, breathe out, very simple, breathe in, shift and twist, breathe out, back to parallel, shift, Turning in, twist that hip in, breathing out. Now this is going to strengthen all the inter and external rotators of the hip. Your body wants a stability and mobility to the hip at the same time. Strengthening the legs, mobilizing the hips, getting rid of those creaks and cracks. And the more mobile your hips are, the less pressure on your low back. So a lot of the time, the pain that we feel in the low back is because our hips, which are really designed to rotate circumductively, circulate to that ball and socket joint, just aren't moving the way they should. And if they are maneuverable, maybe they're not strong enough to do it properly. So let's do a couple more. Turn and out, breathing in, out. Last one. Breathing in and out. Step the feet together. Let's do a plenty breath here. And out. Beautiful. 
So now, once again, we're going to move to a little bit more challenging, a little bit more mobility and stability. And this is going to take a little bit of balance. Now, for older populations, or if you just don't have the stability and balance, you can always do this close to a wall so you can hold on. We're going to show it to you without so that you have to work that standing leg. So, once again, we're going to sink into our legs. Now, the weight is going to be on the right. We're going to come up on the ball of the left foot. We're going to have those hands in prayer. Once again, fingertips just touching. Now I want all your weight, 100% of your weight on your right leg. Now what we're going to do is we're going to step forward and reach a little circle around and come back in. In two, in three, nice and slow, in four, in five, breathe in, breathe out. Should have felt a lot of simulation on this leg while we're working that hip on the opposite side. So once again, let's shift our weight into our left on the ball of the right, all the weight on the left, pinky, big toe, heel, evenly on the floor. Breathe in, breathe out. Don't let it touch the ground. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Shift back again and we're going to reverse the circle. So back to our right leg, 100% on that right leg. So this time we're going to step the foot back and around, just a small circle. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Three. Not such a huge range of motion, but let me tell you, the stimulation is crazy on the leg. Once again, you can totally do this holding onto something. It's totally okay. So load into that leg, hands out in front. If you bring your hands a little bit farther out in front, that actually makes it a little bit easier to balance or use the wall if you need. So all the weight on the left. Let's go last one. Breathing in and out. Two. Three. Step the feet all the way. Let's finish it off with five cleansing breaths. Deep breath in and out. In two and out. In three and out. Last two, nice and slow. Gather the light and out. Last one. Gather the light and melt. At the bottom, raise up a little wisdom water of the kidney. At the heart, turn it over and wash down the heart fire. One last one. And compress. 
So well done. Now, uh, you can use this program as much as you like. Use it every day if you like. Use it a couple times a week. Once again, with Qigong, the more you do it, the more you get from it. So it is something that you can go to to take care of your body anytime you need it. Now, remember, uh, www.bodymedicalqigong.com uh, is our brand new website uh, where we have all in-depth information uh, in addition to these uh, videos uh, that you can learn much more about the program. So make sure you check it out. Now listen, I hope you guys enjoyed today. I hope you learned something. As always, do me a favor, help me to help other people. So share this video with your friends, your family, anybody who could use a little help with their hip and their knee. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.